Okay, interesting. So, what I'd like to turn to is like translation. So, you study、um, these long-lived animals and you see the strategies that they use. Now, how can we take that and, being selfish that we are, then use it、um, to help、um, with human intervention so that so that we can live longer?、Um, yeah. So, I think、uh, it's quite possible. It- Um, it all depends on、uh, what particular mechanism we want to borrow、uh, from long-lived animals. In the case of naked mole at Hyaluron, and that was a very obvious one,、mm. uh, because yeah, we made that mouse.、Uh, we see that it benefits the mouse.、Uh, now the mouse was a transgenic.、Uh, mm. So with human, we we are not proposing gene therapy for aging. <laughs> you know,、yep. that's it needs to be. Really safe.、Um, and any intervention that you want to apply to healthy people needs to be very safe.、Hmm. Uh, so for human interventions, we are developing pharmaceutical ways to、hmm. increase the level of hyaluronin in our tissues.、Um, and、uh, one strategy is to、um, inhibit enzymes that degrade hyaluronin. So this way we can upregulate it systemically in our tissues. So that is one approach. We are looking for molecules、uh, that inhibit breakdown of hyaluronin, and this way we we may kind of arrive to the situation of the naked mole. Right, but the the hyaluronin we make is is shorter. Right, really, we want long hyaluronin. So, but shorter. Yeah, so degradation、work. actually controls both the. Amount and size,、uh, because those enzymes that chop up hyaluronin, they just chop it up. So, so when、mm. there is more activity, hyaluronin gets shorter on average.、Uh, we can actually see it in culture. We have some molecules that inhibit those、uh, degrading enzymes, and if we add them to human cells, we also see longer lengths of hyaluronin. Okay, so can you share? Like, where are you with with kind of the development of that it, that molecule? Well, we have molecules that work in cell culture.、Uh, we don't have a molecule that reliably works in vivo. So we are testing these molecules to see if they, if we give them to mice, for example, is there a benefit? Right. Is there any other, I guess, promising interventions that you are looking at? It、kind of a part. Well, another intervention that we are very excited about、uh, is looking at the ways to improve DNA repair and also improve、um, epigenetics. Because when we get older, our genome gets mutated, and there are all kinds of rearrangements that accumulate.、Uh, but also our epigenome, and epigenome, it's like the packaging. How you take that DNA and. Package it inside the nucleus, which is very important、uh, for the cell to work properly. Because when DNA is packaged, there are some regions that should not be active. There are other regions that should be active. And when we are young,、uh, everything is very nicely organized. But as we get older, that epigenetic packaging gets really、mm. <laughs> messed up. Uh, so that is as important as、uh, keeping mutations away. To just keep, you know, being able to restore proper packaging to our DNA. And so one of the proteins that we discovered that's important, kind of for both processes, is called sirtuin six.、Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's an enzyme that maintains DNA structure. It packages, you know, certain regions into. The right conformation, and it is also important for DNA repair. So we show that activity of this gene correlates very strongly with maximum lifespan,、uh, and we are looking for ways to enhance its activity. So, like again, small. The approach would be to develop small molecules or maybe natural compounds、uh, that activate sirtuin six. So I, you can take hyaluronic acid, right? So you know. I, There's、uh, supplements of hyaluronic acid that、mm-hmm. I can take.、Um, do you do you have any opinion as to whether that would that would actually help the hyaluronic acid levels? Well, I can tell you that it it will 
not harm anyone. <laughs> I think these are very, very safe because hyaluronic acid is a natural component of our tissues. Mm. Uh, there are different um, sources of hyaluronic acid, different commercial preparations. Some is purified from bacteria uh, and some are purified from rooster combs. Uh, so my personal preference would be for rooster combs because when anything that comes from bacteria may have some contaminants that may be pro-inflammatory. Of course, if it's very pure, I think that's good. Uh, but... Um, Rooster comb origin just seems safer to me just in avoiding any kind of inflammatory molecules coming together with hyaluron. Uh, so people take it as a supplement for joint health primarily. Uh, and there are some reports that say that it helps increase hyaluron. I'm, you know, I haven't tested it myself, so I don't have uh, a definitive opinion on the you know, the strategy of oral supplementation, because one concern is that, uh, you know, as we discussed, you need long hyaluron. Mm. And if you take it orally, so most likely it gets broken down in the digestive tract uh, because such large molecules, you know, I don't know if they can be easily absorbed, but mm. at the same time, there are reports that taking hyaluron and Maybe it promotes synthesis of hyaluron in the rest of the body, even if you eat the shorter you know, fragments that reach the tissues, but maybe they help synthesis. So I think that is still something we would like to test. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in the meantime, I think those supplements are completely safe. Okay, safe is good. Safe is good. <laughs> I hope that you found the video informative please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.